and ready to present while well, everybody's still sober. Go ahead. So I'm David Cadavy, and I'm a freelance web designer, and I also write about design at Cadavy.net. And tonight I want to talk to you about the most hated font in the world, which is without a doubt, Comic Sans. <laughs> Everybody hates Comic Sans. I love how everybody's just in agreement that they all hate Comic Sans. <laughs> Jesus probably hates Comic Sans. Your mom, your mom might like Comic Sans, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So how much do people hate Comic Sans? Lately, <laughs> recently, Cleveland Cavaliers owner wanted to write a seething letter after LeBron James let dramatically through a big media circus left his very own hometown Cleveland Cavaliers. So this is probably going to be the most widely read letter that Dan Gilbert writes his entire life. And he chooses to write it in a font normally reserved for birthday party invitations for three-year-olds. <laughs> and how much did this piss people off? It, so much that there are articles written about the fact that he used Comic Sans in TechCrunch, CNN, New York Times, everywhere else. And LeBron James, whom this whole thing was all about, was surpassed by Comic Sans as a trending topic on Twitter. So, why is it that we hate Comic Sans so much that there's an entire movement dedicated to its banishment? Well, it has a little bit to do with poor typographic fundamentals, but it does have, there are some other things involved as well. So tonight I will compare and contrast Comic Sans with Helvetica. Helvetica, of course, is so beloved, there's an entire, an entire movie about typography named Helvetica. And there, there's some obvious differences between Comic Sans and Helvetica. <laughs> One is more suited for wayfinding signage, and the other is more appropriate for sorority scrapbooking parties. But they both lack stroke modulation, and you can see what the difference is there. So on Comic Sans and Helvetica, the, the letters themselves are uniform thickness, whereas like a classic, like Garamond, has modulated strokes, but Helvetica handles this with a little bit more finesse. You can see where the shoulder meets the stem. Am I okay? Is it all right if I move? Where the shoulder meets the stem on this end, there's, it gets a little bit thinner, and this helps evenly distribute the weight of the letter form itself. Comic Sans, on the other hand, you can see this area here, this little area of dark, just really dark area, and, that, and that's bad because it results in uneven texture in body copy. And so I have body copy of Helvetica next to body copy of Comic Sans, blurred for effect so we can collectively experience the, uh, what are you, squinting? And you can see there's darker areas in comics. This actually doesn't, you can't see that at all. Anyways, <laughs> if you could see it, Comic Sans would have like areas of darkness and lightness, whereas the Helvetica is, is actually a little smoother, which is good because then you can see the letter forms themselves. They shine through, they can be red, so clearly, Comic Sans is inferior to Helvetica on typographic fundamentals. But you'll be surprised to learn Comic Sans isn't as bad as you think. It was actually intended to be used in a program called Microsoft Bob in these little talk bubbles. Obviously, it didn't make it into Microsoft Bob, but the font lived on, and it shipped in Windows 95, <laughs> where tragically, it was then destined to be used in every lost kitten poster ever produced thereafter. But you have to remember, in 1994, when Comic Sans was invented, computers didn't have anti-aliasing. That's what makes fonts look smooth on screen. So Comic Sans wasn't supposed to look like this. It was supposed to look like this. It was supposed to be alias, just a bunch of blocks. It was supposed to look like it was made of Legos. And under those conditions, Comic Sans actually looks a little bit better than Garamond does. In fact, so much so that if I had to choose between reading a book in alias 16 pixel copy in Comic Sans or Garamond, I would choose Comic Sans hands down. So the problem isn't so much that Comic Sans is just a bad font. The problem is that now that every man, woman, child, and <laughs> bake sale organizer in the modern world has access to publishing power, they unfortunately don't have access to the design education that helps them communicate clearly, which usually involves not using Comic Sans. I'm David Cadavy, 
And I have so much more to tell you about design that I'm writing a book about it. So go to designforhackers.com and you can get updates and sample information. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>